Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together step by step through the ABRSM Theory Grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam. It's an exam technique guide full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of the time once you're in the exam room. So if you visit SharonBill.com it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really great. Subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more to come. And so now we're going to move on to the section about ornaments in grade five. So if you turn with me to page 47. There we go, so we're on ornaments. And so I refer to this in the PDF document as section J. So you may want to turn in your grade five PDF documents. We'll bring it up on screen to section J. So there's a little bit of additional information here. However, you may also want to turn in your grade four documents. This was the PDF for grade four K and it's using exactly those same ornaments. So you may just want to have those to hand just to keep referring back to because we're going to be doing a little bit more work on these ornaments looking at these in closer detail so you might just want that to hand as well so you can be sure what your ornaments are and so we're just going to look at how to apply these ornaments and so we can see for example in this example that they've given us before exercise one can really gets going um, you can see how using an ornament just simplifies the music. So here we have an akiakachora or a grace note, or uh, some people call them crushed notes, uh, but we need to say either grace note or akiakachora for this exam. And you can see how it's much more simple to read that you just squish that one in quickly, and we know that it's taking a fraction of the value of the previous note and just crushing that in. But rather than getting bogged down with all of the maths, it's much easier to write this. And so what they want us to do is to rewrite these exercises so that they sound exactly the same, but apply the appropriate ornament so that the music uh, needs to be uh, much easier to read, but would um, mathematically recreate and musically recreate what's written so the sound shouldn't change at all but the visual appearance should and so uh, I'm just going to um, quickly map out the bar lines and I'm keeping everything aligned so I don't lose track where I am in their music if it sort of wanders and spreads I'll lose place where I am maybe miss things and also I might run out of space. So nothing should change at all. So we can just quickly copy all of the information. We can quickly copy this bar. Use a ruler, always write in pencil as well, even for the exam. And it doesn't matter, you can always just rub out and keep it neat and tidy. So this bit I'm going to have to think about. And then this next bit, I'm just going to get all the bar in here. And then we'll just come back and deal with the bit that we need to think about. So we can see that we've got the addition of a next door note, but it's equally divided the time. It's not a crushed note, it's equally divided. And so if you refer back to your grade four, you'll recognise that as the appoggiatura, which equally divides rather than crushes the note in. So it doesn't have the little um, 
sort of bisecting the line there. And so the actual melody note is the D, so that should be written as a full crotchet. That's our actual sort of melody note that would be uh, the harmony note. And then the ornament, the embellishment is the C, so we do that a slightly bit smaller note head. And then we can just have the note, the stem pointing upwards to show that it's not part of the actual music. We just have the stem pointing upwards. We give it a little tail, but it's not an official quaver because it's not grouped correctly. It's just a tiny note, but we don't need to put the bisecting line in there. And so that's how that would look as an ornament. It would have to be the appoggiatura. Next bit, we just copy. So let's just get the copying done. Here's the ruler. And then in this next bar, we've got to think how that would be best represented. So we've got the note, a note below, back to the original note in quick succession. And so if you refer back, you'll see that's a lower mordant made famous by Bach's Toccata and Fugue. The Toccata opening note is that. And so we can now replace, this D would be a whole crotchet because altogether that adds up to one beat. And then we've got sort of like this W with a line through it. And then the rest, of course, is unchanged. So hopefully that's explained how to go ahead. If you want to try this next exercise on your own, doesn't matter if you go wrong, it's always better just to learn by your mistakes. Have a little crack at this. You can press pause and then come back into the video when you've had a little go. Doesn't matter if you've got it wrong, we can work through it together in a moment. So let's just get all the nuts and bolts in place. Let's just get all the copying done as far as we can. So, three, four, so straight away we've got a bit of thinking to do. So we've got note, so this here isn't uh, in a bracket, this is the harmony note and you can see that we've weaved around above, then the note, given note, below, given note. This note that's not in the bracket is the harmony note. You can see here, not in the bracket, that's our harmony note. Not in the bracket, that's in our harmony note. That's the given melody note. And so here we can see that that pattern is shown best by the term which weaves around the given note starting above then the note below, then the note. And so all of that adds up to one crotchet beat, one quarter note, and so we'd need a note B. And because we're starting on above the note, we're getting straight into it, the turn would be directly above that note. There we go. So we've just got a little bit of copying to do now. Let's just uh, put the slur, the big well, the phrase mark. Now here, we've got the, this note here is the actual given melody note. And then we've got the turn, but the turn comes after it. And so we've got a five, which would take the place of four. Four semi quavers or four sixteenth notes makes a crotchet or a quarter note so we need a crotchet for an E however the turn occurs after the note so we'd play the note E and then the ornament would occur so it comes just slightly afterwards and then these are unchanged 
so it's very particular where the ornament is placed so it's come after the note has sounded oops because if you were playing this you'd see the E and then as your eyes travelled across the music you'd then see the turn there we go and we just need another phrase mark let's have a go at this next one together so have a crack at it and then we'll look at it together a little bit more work to do in actual copying the notation let's just take it a step at a time get all the other bits and bobs in place so that went a bit wonky shall I do that again There we go, so, so here we have alternating notes and then we have like a little turn at the end which should be unchanged and so what happens is, if you'll notice, uh, I've just given a little bit of a clue because sometimes a trill can begin on the melody note and sometimes the trill will begin on the note above the melody note. It depends upon its place in history. And so here, this is a Mozart piece, so um, in the older sort of composers, the trill begins on the note above the melody note. And so C is our melody note. The trill has actually occurred, begun above, so it's a trill, that alternating note. And then we just need to show, just give an indication, this doesn't change at all. All of this occurs over one beat. However, if we just give a small little example of how that's going, we illustrate how that trill is going to end so we just sort of indicate that we want a little turn at the end and that's sort of an accepted form is filling that in so there we go when it's not in the brackets that's included exactly as written we only change what's in the brackets with the turn or the trill or whatever ornament is required so here just a little bit of copying Ooh. this is the easy bit and then a little bit more copying just do this quickly perhaps you need to take your time and be a little bit more neat and tidy about that and so here we have the note D and then you'll notice that we have a turn that comes after it However, there's this also this new detail that needs to be included that we need to show that the lower note, the lower part of the turn, has been sharpened. So it's all based around this crotchet D. All of this will add up to a crotchet or a quarter note D. That's our melody note. The turn occurs afterwards and we need to put a sharp sign underneath to show that this lower note has been sharpened. If the sharp is here, then we put it on the upper note. And that just gives us a visual clue that the lower note is sharpened. And so now nothing else should be changed. And that's that. Let's have a look at this last one. So if you haven't tried any of these yet, I do suggest you have a little go on your own now and then we'll go through these together. So just a little bit of copying to begin with. So 
So this is the nice bit, although actually none of this is particularly nasty. It's a little bit tricky to get used to, but it's quite a pleasant part of the learning process, I think. So here we go, we've got a bit of thinking to do now. So here we've got the G is the melody notes. We've got the G quickly followed by an upward step and then back again. And so if you refer back to your grade four, you can see that this is now an upper mordant or sometimes it's just referred to as a mordant rather than lower mordant. So it's just kind of a quick alter alternation above the given note. So really, all we need to do is copy out this triplet with the G. So that's kind of the overall maths. But within that unit, we need to just show that there's this quick alteration of an upper mordant. So we just put that above the note G. And you can see how it just makes a much easier job than concerning ourselves with all the small increments of maths that's required to create that sound. There we go. So we've just got a little bit of thinking now to do. And so we can see that we've just taken a snatch out of this beat here, this note value, to squish in this note above the next harmony note. And so we've got a crush note here, or an achiacatura, which requires the little line through the stem. So we do a smaller note. So we're going to have the A will be given back its full value in appearance. So that would be basic notation however we do want you to just snatch a little bit from this note and so the Akiakachura will tell you that and then the rest's just copying ball line there we go job done I do hope that that's helpful to you hope that you found that useful if you can give me a like, that'd be really encouraging to me and subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please do visit SharonBill.com and have a look at the information available to you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.